Okay, so are you ready to get better at mathematics? Well, actually, many of you out there are math superstars, and uh, as such, I think you'll uh, find this problem not too difficult. Now, others of you are going to be a little bit confused, but don't give up because I still think you can figure this problem out as well. But let me go ahead and show you the problem. It is the following. A tree has a linear growth. Now, if you don't know what this means, of course, I'm going to fully explain this in the, uh, the solution, but I don't want to explain this now because I want to give you a full opportunity to show off your math skills. But anyways, a tree has a linear growth. Now, uh, after one year, it was five feet tall. Okay, so I'm kind of interpreting the problem here. And after year four, it was eight feet tall. So the question is, how tall will it be after nine years of growth? All right, so if you want to take on the challenge of solving this uh, problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the uh, right answer in just one second. Then I'm going to fully explain uh, the solution to this problem. Now, I am going to give you a hint here, and it has to do with this term right here, linear growth. Uh, this is a huge topic in algebra, okay, linear equations and uh you know, of course, we're talking about something called a linear growth, and we're going to be building a linear growth model. Now, this isn't the only way you could solve this particular problem because these numbers that I have here in this problem are pretty easy, okay? But I'm going to be using algebra. Now, if you're a little bit intimidated by this, please don't be. Uh, at least check out the video because I think you're going to understand most of it, hopefully, and I'll give you some uh, suggestions if you want to learn more about this topic in algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So after nine years, this tree is going to be 13 uh, feet tall. All right, now, if you got this right, that was uh, very, very good. Matter of fact, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a math expert in the area of linear growth and they'll be like, wow, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds pretty cool. And they'll probably say, congratulations, best of luck. And you'll say, thank you so much. But <laughs> all jokes aside, listen, the best part of me doing uh, these videos is to make these little like jokes and to be informal, okay? Uh, yeah, I've taught in the classroom for uh, several decades. And you know what I like to be? I like to teach math in a relaxed atmosphere, okay? So anyways, if you got this wrong, no problem. I'll have you looking like this at the end of the video. All right, now, as I indicated, I'm going to be um, using algebra. We're gonna be talking about algebra uh, for the solution of this particular problem. And I'm gonna be covering some stuff, uh, and it might be somewhat rapid for um, those of you out there that have you know, maybe been uh, years away from any algebra course, or maybe uh, you are studying this now, but you still don't understand it. So let me give you a couple quick suggestions, okay, as I kind of get into the algebra here. So if you truly want to learn algebra with me as your teacher, then you want to check out uh, my pre-algebra and algebra one courses. You'll find uh, links to both of those courses and other courses as well in the description. That's my best uh, content, my best material. So you can check that out and you'll learn everything that you know I'm talking about thoroughly in those courses. But I also have additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, but this is a very important topic, not only in algebra, but like things like in uh, statistics. Matter of fact, in real life, uh, professional jobs, okay, and I'm not talking about jobs where you have to have college degrees, you need to be able to read data and charts and everything else and, you know, linear growth, this comes uh, up over and over again, especially on things like Excel spreadsheets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyways, I'm trying to kind of set the uh, up this uh, video, this problem, as a very important practical thing to learn, okay? So if you don't understand, I would encourage you to do some follow-on work 
uh, to learn more about it. Okay, so now I'm going to get really kind of get going here because I have a good amount of, of ground to cover. So we do have a word prompt. So you want to read this thing at least three times uh, to really figure out what's going on. And then we need to kind of see a model here. But let's just go ahead and define what something is to have a linear growth. Okay, so a linear growth is the kind of growth, okay, it could be a population, it could be something like this tree, where the growth, if you were to map it out, graph it out, is in a straight line, okay? So anything is that it grows in a straight line trend is called linear, okay? Now, if you look at the root word here, it's line, all right? So this is line growth or linear growth. Now, this is uh, in comparison to other type of things that you probably heard of, and that would be like exponential growth, okay? So things that are kind of grow this way, okay? Like compound interest or population tends to grow this way. It doesn't grow uh, linearly so much. You know, it kind of starts off slow, and then it really takes off like this. Oftentimes, uh, this is also described as things going like parabolic or exponential growth. There's all different types of growth models, but in algebra, the first one that you really have to understand is a linear growth, and there's all different sorts of uh, word problems that you have to solve about linear growth uh, situations, and that's what we have right here. Okay, so we want to go ahead and take a look at how we can kind of model this information in this problem to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at a chart. Now, again, if you don't understand uh, too much of what I'm doing here, uh, just take me, up, uh, take me up on my suggestions and just you know learn a little bit more algebra and this uh, make better sense. But what we want to do here is create two, um, like a, a y-axis and an x-axis, okay? Now, these axes here, is, this is not the x or y-axis, but I want you to kind of think of this as x and y-axis. Now, if you don't know what this is, again, this video might be maybe a little bit too much for you. I'm talking about a simple x-y uh, coordinate plane, okay, where we plot points and graph lines on, right? We're talking basic algebra stuff here. But effectively, this is the problem visually, all right? So what we're going to do is label our x-axis here. This will be this will represent uh, time in years. And our y-axis right here will be height in feet. So the problem says in uh, after one year, okay, this uh, tree reached five feet. So we would plot this point right here, one, five, okay? And then uh, year four the tree reached a height of eight feet. Okay, so you kind of look right here. Oh, this is eight feet, this is year four. So this is the two pieces of information that we have. So this uh, tree is growing, uh, has a linear growth. Okay, so in other words, if I draw a line through these two points, this is the uh, growth trend of this tree. Okay, so what we're looking for is what is the height of this tree uh, at year nine, all right? So it would be somewhere uh, over here. And by the way, um, my graph isn't uh, perfect here. Now, I did say the answer was 13 feet. Okay, now here's year nine. And again, I'm just kind of uh, sketching here. But if we kind of look over to the side here, it's kind of close to 13 feet. Of course, my scale is not perfect. 13 feet might be something like right here. But hopefully you get the idea. Okay. Now, of course, you you know we already have the answer, and I'm kind of explaining uh, this uh, in a way where those of you that never learned this, you know, kind of understand what's going on. Okay. So we're seeing the problem visually, and what we're going to do to solve this problem is to find the rate of change. This is a huge topic in algebra and even more advanced mathematics like calculus. Okay. We want to uh, determine how what is the rate of change. Now, how fast is this tree growing per year, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. And to understand uh, this, we're going to need to know a little bit about the slope of lines, all right? And again, this is an algebra topic that some of you uh, may not have studied, and I'm going to explain it very quickly. Uh, but uh, again, you know, do that follow-on work if you really want to learn this stuff uh, more thoroughly. Okay, now, when we plot points on the xy coordinate plane, right? Again, we have a little x here, a little y here. If I say plot a point, we have a coordinate system, and it's an ordered pair, an x and a y. So, for example, if I said plot the point 1, 5, we would go to 1 on the x and 5 on the y. So here would be 1 on x and 5 on the y. 
uh, right here. Now, of course, this is not a perfect uh, X, Y, uh, you know, uh, scale graph in paper type of situation, but hopefully most of you understand what I'm doing here, okay? So for example, the 0.48, we would go to four on X and uh, eight on the Y, and there would be our point, okay? So we have these two uh, points here, year one, all right? At year one, is this right here, um, this piece of information is on the X axis, okay? So we can kind of represent this this way. Years, okay, will be in the same position where X coordinates at, and then for Y, that's our height, okay? Because it's on like the Y axis, all right? So again, the X axis is like years, okay? The X axis is like years, and the Y axis is like our height, okay? Well, actually not like it, it's exactly uh, like this. So an X, Y point, uh, our X would be years and our Y would be height. Okay. So this point here, we can describe as a 0.15. Okay. So again, X in, uh, years and our Y is uh, height. Okay. So this point that we have again is 1.5. And the second uh, piece of information is the 0.48. Okay. Four representing the years and eight representing the height. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take these two points and find the slope, okay? Now the slope of this line uh, can also be thought of as the rate of change, of growth of this line, okay? This is a really important concept. And uh, a lot of you, you know, um, a lot of students, maybe uh, probably a lot of you as well, you know, do algebra problems or do math problems. You're like, ah, I don't even know why I'm doing this, you know, because you're just calculating the slope, but you're not seeing the connection to real life problems. And a real life problem here is that the slope of a line, uh, you know, when we're talking about a word problem is representing the change of growth, okay? The rate of change. And that's what we're gonna be talking about next. Okay, so the rate of change is oftentimes referred to as the slope. They're basically one of the same on a line and it's defined by the rise over the run of a line. Again, I'm doing some algebra here. And if you haven't taken this, just kind of look through it and you'll see what you have to uh, learn. When, and this is all like basic algebra stuff as well. And, and it's not that complicated. Again, if you've never seen it before, you know, you know, this is the first time you've seen it, you're probably like, ah, this is too scary. All this stuff you can learn, trust me. Okay, but uh, the way a line changes, we measure that by the rise over the run. Now I threw in some fancy uh, symbols here. Okay, this is a pretty fancy stuff. This is the kind of stuff sometimes you see in calculus. This little triangle right there is the delta symbol, okay? And the and delta stands for difference, okay? So it's the differences of the y coordinates over the differences of the x coordinates, right? But you see this, you know, it's just called delta y um, over delta x, okay? I just brought that up as a little bonus type thing. So what we're doing here is we're gonna measure the slope of this line right here, okay, the, the slope of this line is the change of the y, okay, how much it's, the change of its rise over the change of its run. The run is how much it runs out to the right. The uh, rise is how much it's running up. So we're going to measure, it's basically a, a ratio here, a fraction, how much is it going up divided by how much is it running out to the right. So we're gonna calculate that by subtracting the y values, okay, to get this, this is our delta y, and as we uh, subtract these values here, that's our delta x. Okay, now I know my little chart right here is all crazy looking, uh, so hopefully you can kind of see through it, but that's what the rate of change is, the slope, okay? All right, now we have an actual slope formula, and here it is, the slope is defined by y1 minus uh, y2 over x1 minus x2. All that this is saying is that just subtract the y coordinates and divided by the differences of the x coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here's our two points. Again, we um, um, have these on our little graph here. So year one, right, we were at five feet, and year four, we're at eight feet. So what we're gonna do is find the rate of change or slope between these two points. Okay, so here is another place where you have to pay very, very close attention in algebra. A lot of students make mistakes with the slope. So when you're calculating the slope, what I like to tell students is just to underline one point, okay? Because order makes a difference. So I'm going to subtract the y's, right? Remember here, delta y, 
Uh, do I have it here? No, I don't have it here. Let me just review, right? We're going to subtract the y's, find the differences of the y's, and we're going to uh, divide that over the differences of the x's. Okay, now where are the y's? Remember our x, y points, these are the y's right here, okay, 5 and 8. So um, you can see here I have 8 minus 5. It's not a problem. I can go 5 minus 8 or 8 minus 5. But if I choose to go, if I start with this point's information first and then take away this point's information first, you have to be consistent and use this point. Uh, you have to start with this x down in the uh, denominator, okay? Uh, you cannot say, all right, 8 minus 5 over 1 minus 4. That is the most classic uh, mistake uh, when calculating slope, okay? And uh, again, even the best of students make this error, and then they get these problems wrong. Okay, so the best way to do that is just underline a point. So this would be 8 minus uh, 5 over 4 minus 1. So let's do this simple math right here. 8 minus 5 is 3 over 4 minus 1 is 3. So 3 over 3 is just 1, right? So this is our slope. What does that mean? Well, let's kind of go back over here. So the rate of change, okay, of this tree, it's changing how? Well, it's it's changing, okay, and it's the y direction, okay? Its height is going up one, all right, over, okay, now the x direction is the run, and that is at our years, right? So it's going up uh, one over one. Three over three is the same thing as one over one. So it's going up one foot per year, per one year, okay? So that is the rate of change. It's increasing one foot per year. Now, this is a very easy problem, and a lot of you, again, that don't even know algebra could have, you know, kind of reasoned through this. Now, let's go ahead and put this all together and to see how we're going to solve the problem. But before I continue on, I just want to ask you very briefly to consider subscribing to my channel. That really helps me out. Uh, and my mission is to reach as many people that are interested in math that or need help in mathematics. Okay, and this is a real big, uh, you know, it's basically almost a crisis. There is a significant shortage of uh, qualified math teachers, unfortunately. Uh, I would hope that some of you out there, you know, if you're uh, younger or, you know, that you would also, if you love math, uh, maybe, you know, consider, you know, becoming an educator one day. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of education to become a math teacher, right? To teach high school math, at least, you know, the decades that I was teaching, you had to have a degree in math. And, you know, generally most of us had a master's degree, master's degrees. But all that, you know, experience and education I have, I want to share with as many people as possible. So you, by you subscribing, it really does help me reach uh, people like yourself. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification button as well. All right, now back to the problem. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to construct a linear growth model. Okay, now a lot of you are like, oh man, you're blowing, you're blowing my mind. You might be like, okay, my, my head's already smoking, you know, just take it easy here. Well, listen, let's just kind of finish this up. Now, we're talking about linear growth, okay? So we're talking about lines. Now, linear equations or, uh, or lines, okay, or line equations, uh, we have uh, different type of formats that we can use. The most common by far is this right here, y equals mx plus b, which is referred to as the slope-intercept form of a line. So what I'm going to do here is write an equation of this uh, particular line that uh, we're dealing with right here, okay? So let's go back up here. This That chart's too busy. Let me go back up here. So what we're going to do, okay, we have this uh, uh, slope, right? The slope is 1 over 1, okay? In other words, the uh, height of the tree is going up 1 foot per 1 year, all right? Now, let's just see if this makes sense. So right here, uh, year one, the tree was at five. Okay, so year two, it should go up uh, one uh, foot. So that should be six. All right, so year three, uh, it should go up another foot. That would be seven. And at year uh, four, it should go up another foot. That would be eight. And that's what we have in the problem, right? So we know that year four, uh, the uh, tree is at eight and it starts off at one. So we can just kind of, you know, now that we know that piece of information, we can just walk ourselves out here to get to year nine, right? So year five would be uh, nine, year six, 10, year seven, 11, year eight, uh, 12, and year nine, 13, which of course is the answer. But what we're gonna do here is we're going to find 
the equation of this line, okay? Because this is the algebra that you're going to need to know if you are studying algebra. And again, if you are going to work in any kind of professional field where you have to use graphs and charts and data and everything else when you have a bunch of information and if that trend is a linear, you're going to need to get the equation that models that line. We call that, again, a linear equation. So that's what I'm doing next. I'm, gonna get, I'm going to get the specific equation that models this line then we'll use that equation to answer the question. But of course, we could already see how we're going to get the answer. All right, so back to the problem. Okay, here we are. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. Again, a lot of algebra that I'm covering pretty quick. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're confused, just stick with me. We're almost there. Okay, so y, if you recall, right, our x and y axis here, our y axis was our as the same as our height. Okay, our x-axis is the same as our years. So instead of y equals mx plus b, our y is going to be uh, our height variable, and our x is going to be our represent our years. Okay, so our equation, our linear equation for this particular tree is going to be a nice kind of formula, okay, that models the growth of this tree, and that's going to be height is going to be equal to m is the slope. Now remember, the slope is the rate of change. We uh, already figured that out. That's 1 over 1 or just 1, okay? So the height of this tree is going to be equal to 1, that's the rate of change, times uh, the number of years, okay? Plus this piece of information right here is called the y-intercept, and we don't have that yet, okay? But we're going to go ahead and find the y-intercept. The y-intercept of a line, okay, is exactly what it sounds like. It's the point where a line crosses the y-axis, all right, so as I promised, I'm covering a lot of algebra in a short period of time. So to find the y-intercept, uh, all we need to do is uh, uh, find one point that's on that line. Uh, we actually have two, right? The point 1, 5 is on this line. So 1, remember, this is x, and 5 is y. So we could just plug in for x and y. Now, I'm kind of switching back, right, from height. I'm, go I'm using y equals mx plus b. I'm switching back from uh, the height model back to this just to get our B information. Then we'll kind of clean up uh, everything and we'll put it into this nice linear model. Okay, so X is 1. So I'm going to replace this X with 1. And then this 5 is, uh, that's our Y coordinate. So I'm going to replace this uh, Y here with 5. So when we do that, okay, we can solve for B. Okay, this is how it is done, again, in any sort of algebra course. So 5 is going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus b, that variable b. So 5 is equal to 1. So we can see that b is going to be, all we have to do is subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So b is going to be equal to 4. All right, a good amount of work indeed, but we're almost there. So that's our y-intercept. So now we can put everything together. So the height, of the linear model for the height of this tree is height is going to be equal to 1 times the number of years plus b, which now we know is 4. Okay, so this could very well be a question on like an algebra test or something like that. It would be like, here's a bunch of information, give me the linear model, and then answer the question using the linear model. Okay, so that's why I'm kind of going through this, because for those of you that are taking any sort of algebra course, you're going to have to know exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually answer the question, and here is how we're going to do this. So here... Let's test our model out on the point 4, 8, okay? So 4, 8 is what? Well, if I wanted to know how tall this tree is going to be at year 8, I would just plug in an 8 right here into our equation, okay? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do this. So the height of this tree is going to be 1 times year 8 uh, plus 4, right? So uh, 1 plus, oh, nope, I messed this up. I apologize. Not year 8. I wanted to use it's year 4. And some of you probably, some of you were like, hey, hey, hey he's, he's messing up. He's messing up. See, I caught myself. Okay, here we go. So uh, now at year 4, I wanted to know what the height is. So that's going to be 1 parentheses 4, right, plus 4. Because at year 4, I want to know the height. So 1 times 4 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Okay, and that does work out, right? So I almost made a mistake. So to answer the question here at uh, year uh, for year nine, this is going to be very easy because all I have to do 
is plug in nine for my years in question and go ahead and use my linear model, which of course I uh, you know, figured out. So the height is gonna be equal one times nine plus four or 13. Now, uh, some of you might say, well, that is like a long, long way to figure this out. Well, again, the values here are very easy and I could have come up with all kinds of crazy uh, you know, additions to this problem. I could have said, how tall is this tree gonna be you know, 27 years from now. In other words, uh, what I just showed you here is probably the most basic type of example of a linear uh, equation, a linear growth model. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are serious algebra students or if you truly want to learn this stuff, you can. But is there a lot to learn? Of course there is. Is it beyond your capabilities or potential to learn? Absolutely not. Okay, but, you know, you do have to have a healthy respect uh, for the amount of information uh, that, you know, that is required to master mathematics. Okay, they're all like little concepts that add up. And uh, some of the worst advice one person can give to another person in terms of math is like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, just ignore that, skip that. You know, uh, you can learn this really quick. One, two, three. It doesn't work that way. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. That's how people get frustrated in mathematics because they take too many shortcuts. If you truly want to learn this stuff, you can't take shortcuts. You have to have an attitude of uh, commitment. Be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just buckle down. I'm just going to learn it one piece at a time, one skill at a time, one concept at a time. And if you take that attitude, you'll be fantastic, not only in algebra, but as far as you want to go in math as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.